Welcome to the Release Your Blocks podcast. I am your host, Victoria Bond. I am a spiritual empowerment coach. I help teach others to show up to their potency so they can fulfill their mission here on earth. I'm so glad you are here. And if you are interested in becoming a medium, if you're interested in becoming a life coach, or if you're interested in shifting your life from the 3D to live more in the 5D reality, then check me out book a clarity call and let's get chatting. Hello everybody and welcome to today's episode of Release Your Blocks. I am so excited to be here and today I'm going to be talking about up-leveling consciousness. This is something that I work with all of my clients with, with is consciousness and also all of those people around me because let's face it, we are here to grow. We are here to up-level. We are here to learn in this beautiful library of what we call the earth. We are here to shift and heal and grow and know and perceive and up-level in all areas. But we have this thing called the brain, this thing that we call the mind, the thing that we function from, from for so many, many years that we seem to get stuck a little bit stuck and we have these things, we have this this fear that keeps us and this ego that keeps us stuck into these attachments of our experiences to keep us safe. Now, this is what I want to talk to you about today. I want to let you see things through a different perspective. So I'm going to ask you to drop all your barriers. I'm going to ask you to come in with awareness, awareness and allowance of what it is that you can learn in this podcast today. Why are we up-leveling in our consciousness? Because we are at that time, and this is currently 2021, um, at the very beginning of the year, we are uh, at the time in all time, space, and dimensions that we are meant to shift in consciousness as a collective energy. This doesn't mean all love and light and all world peace and harmony you know like hopefully that's going to happen one day but it's certainly when we're up leveling in consciousness does not look that way for many many people and that is why I really wanted to do this podcast I touch base on all of these things in other episodes as well but For this particular podcast, I really want to dive deep into what up leveling and consciousness can look like and how we can shift and change and how we can equip ourselves for that. Now, the truth is many people have been functioning from the external for their entire lives and it starts from when you are in the bassinet or you're in the cot, you're in the crib, you know, you are born and you are this perfect being. Many people say that babies are sinners. They're born being a sinner. So I totally actually don't believe that. I believe that we are born perfect and I believe that we are perfect. Sometimes we don't do, um, you know, things that are appropriate. Sometimes we mess up and we learn, but essentially you are this perfect being and you have this human body and you're here to live your life on purpose. You have a mission here. And many people come and say, Victoria, what is my mission? What is my purpose? And I say, it's right in front of you. Are you willing to see it? So I'm going to ask you right now, these beautiful listeners that are here right now, what is your purpose? What is your mission? Can you acknowledge that you are a perfect being, please? Despite any of your past actions, you are simply perfect right now and you can do healing from the past and quantum leap into the future so you can project and manifest the things that you are desiring as well as what your being and your mission and purpose is here for all together in one beautiful vortex. If that kind of goes over your head, don't worry about it. You may want to re-listen to that. (laughs) But also I'm talking to all of you. I'm talking to your magnificence. I'm talking to your higher self. I'm talking to your being, not just your human mind. This stuff goes beyond the cognitive mind. So this is what I want to talk to you about first and foremost is to not function from your mind. If you want to jump into this 5D reality and stop functioning from a density and a scarcity and a judgment, of what is right or wrong and trying to make yourself 
right by following the rules, I'm going to ask you to just smash all of that now, all of those mistaken beliefs and limitations. Open your eyes with fresh new eyes and say, okay, cool. If I didn't function from my my mind and let that overtake everything, how would I function? You would function from your heart. You would function from your soul. You would function from your gut. Functioning from your entire body and letting your body guide you by listening to it. Your body is full of nerves and cells and molecules. It's full of water. It's full of tons and tons of things. Like I'm not going to go into the anatomy of the body, but you are full of all of these things that have senses. And what you can do is if you learn how to work in with your body, you can read your body and listen to your body and listen to what your body is saying to you. Now, that is a way that when you are up leveling in your consciousness, this is something that you do as you become into harmony with your body and start hearing what it requires, which means if you are in allowance of up leveling in your consciousness, that things may start happening in your body. You may start feeling aches and pains or headaches, or you may start dreaming things. You may have shadows coming up in your dream, things that require to be cleared. You may feel anxious. You may even feel depressed. Your relationships may crumble. Things may happen to your bank account. And that, I know this doesn't sound very nice, but I want to give you the, the absolute truth of some of the things that can happen. Things can crumble. Let the crumble happen. Allow yourself to come back to you. So if everything around you was completely gone, you would be okay. When we are functioning from this 3D density, this reality that we have been for such a long, long time, and we are shifting really, really hard and fast right now, I believe we're at the peak of the shifting and it's going to keep heightening, especially as the new beings are coming through, the, the new um, babies, um, the, the animals, the earth beings, the light beings. As this is happening, what is happening is that the crumble is happening. And we have to be strong within ourselves to know that we have unshakable faith that everything is going to go our way because we're here for bigger things than paying the mechanic or paying the mortgage. Those things are important because we require the car and the house. But if you let the external pressures and the external reality the collective energy that is all around, if you let that rule you, you indeed are not in control of your destiny. You are letting everything else control you. So just take a little check of the relationships around you right now, the people around you, uh, your workmates, your clients, um, your situations, your financial situations, and just have a little bit of an audit is there anything that's triggering you right now? Is there anything that's really pissing you off? Anything that anyone that you're annoyed at, angry at, mad at? What is going on for you? And now I want you to take back your power. Allow these thoughts and feelings to come up and see them. And this is when we like dive a little bit into shadow work. And I go deeper into this with, with in my programs and, and in my groups. But, you know, allowing those feelings to come up the feelings of hatred, the feelings of that person is annoying me, the feelings of why don't I have the money or why don't I have that relationship? Why do I have a husband who treats me like that or a child that talks to me like that? Allow anything that's going on in your reality, if this is relevant for you because it's going to be relevant for somebody to come up and allow yourself to look at it. Look at what it is that you are thinking about right now. Now take your power back. I take my power back. I take full responsibility for why this is happening in my reality. The truth is, my love, if this is happening in your reality, you have chosen this right now. Now, not necessarily cognitively, if you're in a, an abusive relationship um, or 
if you're extremely broke or if, if you've got some things, some some real things that seem to be happening to you right now. Um, I'm not saying, hey, you created all of this crap right now so you could be in pain. Um, not in a cognitive sense anyway, but on a bigger, 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 bigger consciousness scale, are you up-leveling in your consciousness? Is this an opportunity for you to grow? Is this... Are these thoughts and feelings and this crap that you've brought up to look at, are these things mirroring for you so you can learn and you can grow? If things trigger you, then you are not standing in your power. If things annoy you and really fire you up and you hold on to that and you can't work through it really quickly and see whether it's like a mirror or see you know what the purpose of this is and it confuses you and you feel like that your power has been taken away from you then you are not in your power so coming back into your power and working on yourself in this body, having harmony with your body and with your being and with your soul and with your spirit and with everything around you is always about glowing yourself up and grounding yourself and coming into you and knowing that you're here for more, knowing that even though you can't see that top of the stairwell, that there is more steps and there is a light and there is a way that you are going to grow, that you are going to shift because there is a purpose for you and you can create your destiny and the most funnest aligned way to get there. And if that means that things are happening, like crap is happening in your life and this crumble is happening, this the relationships seem to be crumbling. People seem to be triggering you. Friends are no longer your friends. You're feeling like you're seeing energy leaks with people. You're getting triggered by people because they are giving you the perfect gift of reflection. If these things are happening for you, how can you have more ease with it? Many people go through this and they have this stuff come up and then they go, they retreat. Just before they're going through a breakthrough, they retreat. Many people go through my programs and feel really, I call it wonky. One of my clients calls it wonky donkey. <laughs> She's like, I feel wonky donkey. So like, if you feel wonky, I go lean in, lean in and project into the future where you want to be. Quantum leap, my friends. This is how you quantum leap. You lean into the uncomfortable feeling. You do not go into victim mode. You take your power back instead. And you say, I take all responsibility rather than this is not my fault. Why does this shit happen to me? Because then when you're going to victim, you're giving away your power. Why do people stay in victim mode? Because seemingly it seems easier. Just like grabbing the packet of chips instead of making yourself a salad. <laughs> we know that fast food and packet food is easier to get because you can't be bothered making dinner. But if you know that if you make dinner, then of course, there's going to have a ripple effect of how you feel. And as you grow old and your vitality and your energy and all of those things, it's the same thing with consciousness. Um, it's really about empowering yourself to know that if you lost everything today, that you would be okay. Empowering yourself to know that if you die today, that you've done enough. You did your best. And what does your best mean? Your best means waking up and saying, how can I be the best version of me today? Not to the world and externally, but how can you be the best version of you to you? Because that is going to make the difference. If you have experienced consciousness like up-leveling or up-leveling of, up of consciousness, you and I both know that you shifted and then people around you shifted. Some people didn't come with you. This has happened your entire life. This happened when you decided to go to university and get a career. This is what happened when you decided to take a plunge and have the nice house or live a particular way, or start eating healthy and stop drinking. This happened um, those times when you decided to start listening to podcasts and growing and doing personal development. There's people that didn't believe in it and they didn't come. And rather than judging them, 
you went, well, this is what I'm choosing and I'm choosing me. So I empower myself to grow and to be extraordinary in this moment. And whether you said that to yourself or whether it was just an awareness that you followed and you got interested in listening to a podcast or following somebody or buying a program or starting your own business or becoming a holistic practitioner, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You've done it. You have done it. You have up-leveled many times in your life and up-leveling in consciousness is all about making a conscious decision to be as conscious as you possibly can in the most aligned way, which means choosing you, taking responsibility, putting on those big girl pants, stepping into the shadow, seeing where you desire to be, and then projecting yourself into that future. So why do some people not up-level? Well, a lot of people don't want to leave people behind. You may have already experienced that as well. And this is something that, you know, I do a lot of work on myself. I was up 3.30 a.m. this morning to do breath work um, with my coach. And um, the most amazing thing about that was, you know, I went to bed at 10.30 last night and I require sleep. <laughs> I require a lot of sleep. And there was many years I didn't get sleep. And I, I have suffered anxiety and depression in victim mode. I have suffered extreme um, sleep deprivation uh, because I had babies that didn't sleep because those babies were so conscious and so aware of how I felt. They wanted to help me so much. And they did. Because when I saw the reflections of what they were teaching me, the crumble was so painful that I will never go back to that pain. And I will always take full responsibility and see every shadow. And I will step forward into it and then project into my future so I can grow no bit, no matter how big the crumble was. My crumble was so, so, so intense that there was nothing left. And I had to pick myself up crumb by crumb by crumb by crumb. So I'm hoping this is making sense to you in the crazy way that I usually talk. So people don't want to up level because they don't want to leave people behind. You will notice that some people um, really explode and expand in their businesses and their lives when they've lost everything, when they've been to the pits of hell and back. Maybe that is what we call hell. Maybe hell and heaven are the same thing. Maybe that it's this unconscious and the consciousness. Maybe it's the yin and the yang. Maybe it's the dark and the light. Maybe it's the light and the heavy and the shadow and the light. Like, you know, when we open our minds to all of the possibilities and we function from awareness and not the right or the wrong or the good or the bad, or I must find the fucking answer, then we can come from a point of space and we can really be a part of source of God, of everything that is. So like it's like the whole you and me and I am you, but we are also separate. We have to take responsibility for our own entity. And you are so lovely and kind and generous that sometimes, you know, sometimes we don't up level because we don't want to leave these people behind. I won't ever stop, you know, um, loving my husband. I won't ever, I, I will stay with him forever and ever and ever and ever. And I will prove that by marrying him and saying for better or worse till death do us part. Even if I'm a miserable person and we are so broken, I want to up level in consciousness and he doesn't. We've got kids together. Like, I mean, can you see how insane that is? I'm not saying don't work for your marriages, of course, but work for yourself. My husband grew with me and I'm so grateful for that, but I was willing to um, up level. And if he didn't want to choose that, then that was his choice. And I was going to give him the respect to not choose that. And in fact, he did choose that. There's always another possibility. There is always another level. And if you are keeping those people small around you, because you want to be loved and you want to show your worthiness by, um, you know, aligning and agreeing or resisting and reacting or, you know, just, just being with them in their vortex and they're not growing and they're not shifting. So you better stay small. Then can you see how insane that is as well? And if you were truly functioning from consciousness, then you would know 
that everybody has free will, everybody has choice, and it is up to every individual person to make that choice for themselves so they can join that, that higher collective energy of consciousness. Everyone has the ability. We have to see that magnificence within everybody. We see that, we talk to that, they generally up level. If they're not choosing that, then maybe they weren't meant to choose that. Maybe it's perfect where they are and they don't want to grow. And I know for me, a lot of people around me wouldn't be able to hear this, um, but I've got, you know, we, we can't choose our family. I mean, I, I think we have chosen our family, but <laughs> essentially, you know what I'm saying? We have our family, our family, our family, and a lot of people don't want to hear this type of stuff. If you're still listening, then clearly you do like to listen about consciousness, but um, I'm not going to go and tell you know, my family members that are not interested in any of this, they think it's like they probably don't even know it exists really um, on, on like cognitive level. I'm not going to go tell them it's time to up level your consciousness, do this, do this, do this, because then I'm coming in from a point of view of judgment of that they're not good enough as they are, but the truth is they are. And what if they just chose what they're choosing now and it's perfect for them? How does that change everything? If everybody is choosing for themselves, then aren't they perfectly where they need to be? They would have found the, this podcast if they were meant to. Maybe, um, you know, you you share a podcast with them and or share a link or share a little nugget of gold when they, when they seem receptive to listening or when they ask you a question and maybe right then they have a shift. What else is possible with consciousness and what are they willing to hear and know and be and perceive? Some people don't up-level as well because they don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. And this is something I've experienced myself uh, recently is, you know, I work with entrepreneurs and I work with people who desire shifting and changing, but they don't necessarily desire the crumble. I mean, how many of us want to have, you know, the crumble really happen? <laughs> um Many of us don't want to have a breakdown and feel emotional and cry. Many of us don't want to bring up the past or the abuse, the trauma, the things that we've gone through. Many people just want to keep bearing that stuff and smiling and carrying on. But rather than dragging it up and going through all of that stuff, when it does pop up naturally in our thoughts, that is the time where you look at it and you shed light onto the shadow and see what the gift it is. It comes up always at the appropriate time. Now, for me, I found myself yesterday making myself slightly smaller. I was like, oh, okay. If people are uncomfortable right now because I'm up-leveling and they're not, what am I supposed to do? And then I had this very strong awareness and doing breath work this morning that, oh my gosh, if they're choosing that, that is okay. I can be here to hold the space, but I'm not here to make myself smaller. Just because I like these people doesn't mean that I've got to stay small. It means I grow and I grow and I grow and I say, hey, I'm over here. You're magnificent too. Come and join me if you choose. No one likes seeing other people sad. No one likes seeing other people depressed or in victim mode, but no one can help anybody. You can only hold the space and say, I'm over here when you're ready. They will ask you for advice when they're ready. Allow people to come to you and be guided to you, like allow them to be drawn to you because of your light. And then you can guide them when they are ready to hear it. When I first learned that I was an energy clearer and that I could clear entities, I thought, holy moly, I've just been given this gift. I've been given this gift of clearing. This is a part of my life's purpose. I need to clear every single Tom, Dick and Harry. I was clearing people off television shows. I was clearing like my family 24 seven. I was messaging all my friends going, do you want a clearing? Do you want a clearing? Do you want a clearing? At one stage, I was literally clearing as many people I was going through lists in my head of the people I knew. I think I was even writing down lists and going through and clearing every single person. I was missing an entire point. These people do not require to be saved. They're perfect. Perfect. And they can choose to up-level their consciousness and that's not going to make them better than they already are. 
I'm no better now than I was five years ago when I was having a mental breakdown. I'm still exactly the same, perfect as I was then. I am just up-leveling consciously because I'm choosing to, and that is my jam. What is your jam? How far and deep are you willing to go? I'm willing to get up at 3.30 in the morning to have a breathwork session with an incredible coach and an incredible team of people because today I'm choosing me because today I choose to up-level, because I am willing to receive the abundance of joy and love and money and all of what the earth is willing to give me and the entities and all of those things. And today I'm willing to do this podcast in my dressing gown. Um, my whole family is asleep. I've had a breathwork session. I've been for a walk with an incredible conscious friend, of which I'm just was so grateful for, and she brought her dog. These are the things that I see beauty in. I see it all. I see how magnificent everybody is. And that is because I'm choosing to be an allowance of how everything is perfect and there are no mistakes and there is no right or wrong. There is no judgment. I am not perfect. I work on this every single day. So when I'm making people feel uncomfortable, I had to come in and I had to check myself. And when I was making myself slightly smaller for a moment and had these thoughts of, oh my goodness, maybe I shouldn't share my successes with my friends or with these people that are up-leveling because I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. What I realized was you just lost a little bit of your light. So now I'm going to call it back. I call back my life. I take full responsibility for everything that I've done. And I'm not going to apologize for being successful. I'm not going to apologize for not being depressed. I'm not going to apologize for having the energy of getting up at 3.30 because I essentially worked my butt off to get myself to this place. And now I know what to do to up-level my consciousness on a daily basis. Some people are afraid to up-level their consciousness because they don't want to be seen. They don't want to, they don't want to see their face. They don't want to up-level. They don't want other people to see their face. They don't want to be seen at all. In fact, they will down their look. I, I know because I've been there. I've done that. I went from being a hairdresser wearing sequins and loving my life and being so excited to feeling, uh, letting having a baby and letting everything come up to come and be shifted. post depression, all up-leveling in my consciousness. Does it really matter? And what happened was I looked at it all after I got denied meds because I was that desperate. I decided that I went just like my whole life. No one can actually help me but me. So I chose more. And I wake up every day. And I affirm the living daylights out of my life. And I cry with joy because I love my life and my children and I cry with pain because I do the work to let out those things that I've been locking in for how many lifetimes so I'm willing to be seen I'm willing to be vulnerable I'm willing to be me I'm willing to shift and change I'm willing to be a different me every day if that's what it takes because I'm not going to have the attachment of who the fuck I think I need to be I am willing to change and be all of me. And there's so many different facets of who I am. I'm quiet and shy and reserved. I'm loud and expansive and explosive. I'm a divine feminine energy that loves to be looked after and pampered and touched. And at the same time, I'm a go-go girl and I love to action things and work out and make massive massive shifts in my business and help other people and call people out on their bs because i love them that much there's so many different facets of me there's so many different facets of you who are you choosing to be right now and what would it look like if you cut all attachments to who you think you are and you chose who you really were you started being it you project into the highest version of yourself every day over and over and over. And then you are that. And then you do it again and again and again. You up level and up level and up level financially with your love, with your body, 
the more you love the body, the more you love the body. The more money you make, the more money you make. It's there is no limit to what you are going to receive apart from yourself. So allowing yourself to have the crumble. Some people, you know, they want to stay in victim mode, so they don't up level in their consciousness. They want to feel the pain because they like it. Again, I know how it feels. When I was 15, I would lie in my bed and I would cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. This deep, deep, deep sense of loneliness. As long as everybody else is okay, it doesn't matter that I feel this pain. And I remember saying that my, to myself, holy moly, what a crazy affirmation is that? Like, <laughs> don't teach your 15-year-old how to do that. Um no, instead, teach your 15-year-old to say, you know, today is going to be a fantastic day and I'm going to allow all my feelings to flow and I'm going to acknowledge them. And today I'm going to choose whatever brings me joy. How does that change absolutely everything? The victim mode, the feeling, the pain. I remember being nine months pregnant and just having a fight with my husband going, you don't understand, you don't understand. And saying to my midwife, I just cry for like three hours a night. And she just nodded and looked at me. And I'm like, does no one in this world know how to help me? I felt so alone. And it took me straight back to that 15-year-old. And it also took me straight back to when I was a little baby. Today in the breathwork session I had, I was I went back to this visualization of being a tiny little baby and realizing that I wanted to help my mum who had all these feelings of her parents were a long way away. Her husband was working. I was colicky. I was her first baby. She was like, what the heck do I do with this thing? You know, I was a hard baby. And the reason I was a hard baby is I could feel everything. I could feel everything because I was so conscious and I felt the loneliness. I felt the desperation. And a lot of babies feel this. And you may have felt this as well. Fast forward 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you just keep on going. And there's these moments of when we feel these things. Now, we all have different pain bodies. Bodies, and some of you, it may not even be resonating with some of you. You may be like, oh my God, she's talking to me. But what I want to let you know is, you know, you don't have to carry everybody. And that's what I realized today, again, on another layer, because I know this, I teach this, but there's always another layer and I will always keep working on myself every day. I will affirm the living daylights out of myself every day. I will wake up and I will love the living daylights out of myself and I will give it to myself every day. And I will say, what do you require today, Victoria? And I will come to myself and fill myself up before I do my children and my husband before my clients. Sometimes I fall off the wagon. I'm not going to lie. And I start putting everybody else first. But you know what? This habit I've had and carried the pain of the world, the pain of other people's emotions. I've carried this since I was in a, in a cot. And now I release that. Are you willing to release the pain that you've carried for others as well? Are you willing to up level so others can join you if they choose to? at least give them the opportunity to. Are you willing to get out of victim mode and choose wealth and health and abundance and joy? Where are you afraid of what success means or what people seeing you means? Where are you functioning from other people's judgments because you judge others and you allow others to judge you? In fact, you invited them to judge you your whole entire life. Enough is enough. It's time to up-level. Some people won't do up-leveling in consciousness because they love the attention that they get from being in victim mode. What did you do to get attention as a child? See how I'm jumping like from literally from childhood to high consciousness and future self, because it's all the same. Time is not linear. This is all relevant. Um, where are you functioning from? If I show up for myself, then maybe people won't give to me anymore because I got attention because I tantrumed. I got attention because I was naughty. I got attention because I was the good girl. I got attention because fill in the gap. What did you have to do to get attention? 
how many kids hurt themselves and you're like, oh, come here, 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 oh, my little baby. And then they're like, oh, that's a good way of getting attention. And then all of a sudden you're an adult and you're like, why can't I stop hurting myself? Why do I keep breaking bones? Or, you know, I, I had a client one day and she said to me, I'm always hurting myself. And I go, so what is that giving you? And she goes, it is giving me attention. And she put her hand over her mouth and she looked like she was going to cry. And she said, I can't believe that I just said that. Hurting myself gives me attention because I don't have a mum here right now. And um, there's no other way I can get attention. And I get attention when I hurt myself. And I went, wow, well done for having that awareness. And I had no judgment on it. I don't know how her life has changed now, but she definitely had a shift in that moment. And when I was packing attention, when I was in victim mode, when I was depressed, when I was having this crumble, when I had postnatal depression, when no one could hear me, when I was so tired and I had these hard children and I was broken having to work when I was pregnant, like, can you see the energy of that? But when I was in that mode, I was crying out for attention. And when people tried to give me attention, I was like, you just don't understand you can't hear me and then I had spirit trying to talk to me and I felt so alone and in that moment of surrendering and going well I've got nothing to lose so I'm going to choose more and I'm going to choose me because I'm the only one that can get me out of this hole what happened was I committed to myself I committed to my consciousness I committed to being all of me in this lifetime and to never give up, to never give in, to never quit. And to this day, I have not quit. And it makes me want to cry because I work really hard on myself and I show up every single day. Some days I want to stay in bed because I remember all too well what it was like being in victim mode. I remember what it was like to cry and I loved the feeling of crying and feeling so sorry for myself. It was all too familiar. I'd been carrying so many people for so long energetically that I was exhausted and now I had these children that wanted from me and they were needy. How was I going to carry the world if I had to carry these children too? And you can see how dark that is. That was a shadow that I had to bring up and look at and say, you know what? Thank you for showing me that I have this unique gift that I can empower people and I can show up. But firstly, I have to show up for me. So I'm going to show up for me and I'm going to do this like perfectly imperfect and I'm going to lead others as I grow. And that's what this last year has been about. It's really been about growing to these next levels of consciousness, up-leveling myself and getting out of this overgiving or keeping myself small, therefore keeping others small. Um, because I'm not here to appease people. I'm here to call BS. I'm here to share my story. I'm here to up-level consciousness. And I'm here to help other people do so. In um, my magnificent mediumship group last night in um, a program that I'm doing for mediums, we did a mass clearing and we cleared thousands of beautiful energies that were stuck here. There were some darker energies in there as well, but with no fear and no judgment, we allowed ourselves to hold the space for them to be cleared so they could leave the earth. We allowed the animals that were around and the babies and the energies that were around connected to all 20 of us to come into our portal and to be released. And it was the most beautiful divine thing I've ever experienced. Everyone was having these kind of um, these shifts. Um, and this is a part of the mediumship program because uh, when we do these things, we, we're making a difference, a huge difference to the earth. It's just magical. And the most incredible thing happened after we went through this random experience. It wasn't planned. It was off the cuff. 
one of the girls who's in the program, who's a dear friend of mine, she's a nurse and she's a midwife. She um, was um, just came in, she she snuck in and she was she turned on the um, the Zoom link. We were having the live training, and she was sitting there. And I said to her, "You just missed the whole event." And she goes, "What happened?" And I went, "Oh my god, is that a new newborn baby in your arms right now?" And she goes, "Yes, it is." And everybody's faces dropped. I had people crying on this call. I had people with their mouths open. I certainly, I had my hand over my mouth because my my jaw had dropped so low. And she said, what happened? What happened? What happened? And I said, you're going to have to go back and watch. But to give you a short lowdown, we just cleared babies and animals and beings and spirits from the earth we gave them an opportunity to up level their consciousness because they don't have a body right doesn't mean that they're not here to up level their consciousness or that maybe they're stuck down here for lack of being conscious i don't know and i said and you've just walked in the very very end as we finished and opened our eyes and you have got a baby who is three hours old exactly because that's what, that's what she had told me. And, and it was a miracle. It was the sign of new birth. It was a sign of a new consciousness. It was a sign of what we just did made a massive difference. And right now I have goosebumps. Because without judgment and with invitation of shifting and growing and allowing ourselves to be in this beautiful awareness of what it is we can do, because we are perfect. We can shift things. Up-leveling consciousness is about choice. It's about choosing you. It's about doing the things that your body require you to do, like moving, like meditating, like healing, like activating, like breath work or Reiki. I don't know if I just said Reiki. (laughs) You have to release to receive. You have to be in awareness so you can be in allowance. And that is not trying to be a right person or trying to find the answer. What if there is no answer? What if your answer is different to somebody else's? Just like someone likes their hair blonde and someone else likes their hair black. There's no right or wrong on what hair color is (laughs) right. It's about what makes you feel good. So what makes you feel good? Are you willing to shift this year? Are you willing to grow financially? Are you willing to be the space for others to grow by coming back to you and lighting yourself up by knowing what your blueprint is and how you work and what makes you tick? by not letting the external dampen you, by not letting the judgments of others, these beautiful reflections that they're giving you so you can grow, like, you know, letting that help you and seeing the beauty within what they're giving you right then and there. The biggest judgments I've ever had, and I've probably gone back with a whole lot of resistance, are the things that I look back on now and have awarenesses of, oh, wow, that was a gift they gave me. Wow, that mental breakdown I had and hitting the wall and having hitting burnout, that was a gift. <gasps> that changes everything. It changes everything. So I trust that you are getting what I'm saying in some level. Everybody will get something differently. If you are ready to up-level, if you are ready to shift into this new paradigm, I know these words consciousness and paradigm and 5D and up-leveling, all of these things are common words, but they're all relevant. Words cannot really express the energy of what it is that you're after, but you know that feeling I'm talking about. That little, that little ignite, that little fire burning within you that you're here for something. You may not quite know what it is, but like I said before, it is right in front of your face. You just have to have the balls to go get what you want, convince yourself that you are worthy and go be the thing you want to be. 
despite any excuses that you have. I am dyslexic and I do not do technology very well. It is not my forte. And this is not me um, downplaying. This is like simply a truth. I get by, but it's not my thing. Just like accounts, just like writing. (laughs) But nothing will stop me because I'll never give up. I'll never give in. And I will always push for more. But when I'm pushing for more, I won't do it at the expense of myself or my soul or my spirit or my body. I will take that time out to honor my divine body. I will take that time out to nurture myself. I will take that time out to play and have fun. And I will keep reminding myself every day why I'm here. I will journal that out and I will put myself first. I'm still learning. I'm still deconditioning from being a people pleaser, of putting others first, of trying to prove my worth by by putting everybody else first. No more. I'm done. I'm done with being a people pleaser. I'm done with keeping people small by keeping me small. I'm choosing more and I'm inviting others to choose more. If you want to go deeper into this, You can do that by finding other podcasts, by doing your own research, going with what's light and heavy for you. If you want to do one-to-one coaching with me and you want to dig deep and you want that support and accountability, which is something that really helped me with my coaches last year, if you want that, then reach out. I'm taking one-to-one clients. If you're interested in Magnificent Mediumship or the Release Your Blocks program, um, then let me know. And I've just opened up Soul Alignment Guided sessions um the readings and they are a 90 minute call they are at a really reasonable price they are on my website and it is in a complete soul shift with soul retrieval with implant removal with talking to spirit with looking at your blueprint with dna activations and all the divine things if you just want a one-off and a consciousness kick So I'm here for you. So reach out. You can find me on Holistic Energy Shifting. You can find me at halohealing.nz. And um, Halo Healing is really, really shifting this year. Everything is shifting, shifting, shifting. It is all landing. And um, we just have to trust that it can come to us with ease if we feel aligned and we come to ourselves first and do what we want to do. Start with the internal and then let that flow out to the external. Give your body what it requires, release to receive, acknowledge your awareness, feel your emotions and let that crumble happen. I absolutely adore you. And if you're still here, I want to say thank you for listening because the more people that listen, the more empowered and listen up I get because I am here to share I am here for a bigger, bigger purpose than anything I can ever comprehend. And um, yeah, if you loved this, please share it. Please go on and you can just literally share it on Messenger or share my podcast with someone. You can give me a review, a star rating, all of those things if you um, desire to. And I would love to hear from you to know how you enjoyed this. So I can keep going. So I know people are listening. I need that confirmation and evidence that people are listening because I trust that it is going to those who require it. Sending so much love your way. Thank you. Have a beautiful day and I will see you in the next episode. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for joining the Release Your Blocks podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear from you. So please leave a review and tell me what your favorite takeaway from today was. There is so much more from where this came from. You can also find me at Holistic Energy Shifting on Facebook, where you can find more content, more coaching, and more guidance. Have a grand and glorious day, and I'll see you next time.